A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul addressed the people in these words. I am a Jew, born in Tarsus in Cilicia, but brought up here in the city. At the feet of Gamaliel, I was educated strictly in our ancestral law and was zealous for God, just as all of you are today. I persecuted this way to death, binding both men and women and delivering them to prison. Even the high priest and the whole council of elders can testify on my behalf. For from them, I even received letters to the brothers and set out for Damascus to bring back to Jerusalem in chains for punishment those there as well. On that journey, as I drew near to Damascus about noon, a great light from the sky suddenly shone around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I replied, Who are you, sir? And he said to me, I am Jesus the Nazarene, whom you are persecuting. My companions saw the light, but did not hear the voice of the one who spoke to me. I asked, What shall I do, sir? The Lord answered me, Get up and go into Damascus, and there you will be told about everything appointed for you to do. Since I could see nothing because of the brightness of that light, I was led by hand by my companions and entered Damascus. A certain Ananias, a devout observer of the law and highly spoken of by all the Jews who lived there, came to me and stood there and said, Saul, my brother, regain your sight. At that very moment, I regained my sight and saw him. Then he said, the God of our ancestors designated you to know his will, to see the righteous one and to hear the sound of his voice. For you will be his witness before all to what you have seen and heard. Now why delay? Get up and have yourself baptized and your sins washed away, calling upon his name. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus appeared to the eleven and said to them, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any dead thing, deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is the feast day of the conversion of St. Paul. It's a feast day of the conversion of a murderer, persecutor of the church. Jesus so touched him that he turned him inside out and right side up. Jesus' appearance to him revolutionized his life. Remember, Paul was a murderer. He killed Stephen, the first martyr. And then, after the appearance of Jesus, he went from a persecutor to a proclaimer. Dramatic conversion. And that's what we're celebrating today. Conversion. Each one of us is going through a conversion. Some initial conversion, most of us ongoing conversion. And I'll talk more about that. I'm a passionist priest. I've been ordained for 31 years now. And one of our well-known saints in the passionist community is a saint I know that you've heard of. Her name is Maria Goretti. When she was 11 years old, just a young girl, a 20-year-old young man named Alessandro Serenelli tried to violate her, and she resisted. She embraced purity with her life. And because she resisted, she was stabbed 14 times by Alessandro. And she survived for about 20 hours, and her last words as she passed away at age 11, her last words were, I forgive Alessandro, and I want him with me in heaven. Wow, beautiful words. Alessandro went to prison for 30 years. He was still bitter, violent, angry. And a couple years into his prison stay, one night he had a vision and it was a vision of Maria Goretti. She didn't say a word. She appeared to him with 14 white lilies and handed those white lilies, symbol of purity, and also the symbol of how many times he stabbed her. He handed them, she handed them to him, and he understood that he was forgiven. Soon after, he went to his bishop, or he called for the bishop, because he wanted to go to confession. And he went to confession and experienced a conversion, change. He wasn't so violent anymore. In fact, he became a model prisoner. And after 30 years, they let him out early. He had so changed his life and his behavior. He let go of the anger. He let go of the violence. He had been changed, that ongoing conversion. And then when he was let go, when he got out of prison, he joined a Franciscan monastery as a lay brother. He was at Maria Goretti's canonization in 1950. 
You see, conversion is initial, but it's also ongoing. Some of you that are watching, you need to have a conversion. <laughs> you need to come to Jesus. You need to give him your life. But most of us, we've given our life to Christ. But it's this process, if you will, this journey, this pilgrimage of change. And that is what Lent is all about. Lent, of course, a season of purification and enlightenment. Those are the two main ways that we are purified, the two main ways that we grow, we're converted. First of all, by purification, turning away from sin, becoming holy, developing virtue, and second of all, enlightenment, being illumined by the presence of God. That's conversion, ongoing conversion. Open up your hearts this morning, today, whenever you're watching this Mass. Open up your hearts to the working of God in you and in me to be fully converted. Not just the initial conversion, but the ongoing conversion. And I think Alessandro is a great example of that. Alessandro Serenelli, who some are calling upon to become beatified and canonized in the Catholic Church because of his great conversion. Another murderer who was converted. I've been a priest now for 31 years. My main ministry is to travel around preaching parish missions and I hear confessions and I preach on television and write books and do different things and it's the joy of my life. Well, I have to say that Probably, not probably, definitely, the biggest surprise of my priesthood, without a doubt, hearing confessions. Wow. I have had people come to me, and when they come, the sincerity and the honesty and the, the vulnerability. I've had people break down in tears before me, weep. I've had people tell me their life story, and I can see God working in their soul right before my eyes. It's a great miracle. And what's happening is, as they receive forgiveness and as they open up their heart to the grace of God, what's happening is conversion, ongoing conversion. I've had people come to me that haven't been in 70 years, I think that's my record, and I've also had people come to me that's their first confession. But no matter who they are or how long it's been, it's God working. No matter who you are, how long it's been, or what you've done, now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. You see, we are celebrating this wonderful conversion of St. Paul to laud a great saint, of course, but also to look at ourselves. Where do we need conversion? And to literally, sincerely, and honestly come before the Lord, open up our hearts, and allow the Holy Spirit to do a great work in us. As I said, conversion is initial, it can be a dramatic, or ordinary conversion, but it's also ongoing, and that's what we're most familiar with. Purification and enlightenment. Purification and enlightenment. We want to get deeper with God. We want to allow God to do a great work in us. And as I said, no matter how long it's been, or who you are, or what you've done, now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. What a beautiful feast day we celebrate today. And I'm praying that your conversion will go forward. You won't stay stuck. You'll move forward. You ever want to see people that are being converted go to a 12-step meeting? I do ministry in the 12-step program, Alcoholics Anonymous, Overeaters Anonymous, Gamblers Anonymous, whatever your addiction is. And the stories are real, they're raw, and they're truthful. God is working 
in these people, bringing them from addiction to recovery. And it's conversion. There's no other way to put it. Something beautiful happens. And not only is it conversion in terms of them coming into recovery, but it's conversion in terms of their relationship with God. They call it an awakening. And we all need to be awakened more fully in our life. That's exactly what happened with Paul. He saw a light. He heard a voice. And for those of us who love the Lord, you know that sometimes he gives us such consolation, the light, the illumination, the voice of guidance and protection. And real life conversions, those of you who are in the 12 step program, I pray that as you work the 12 steps, especially step number three, surrendering your life to God, that you will sense God working in you. You will not stay stuck, those of you who may be addicted and you need to come into recovery. I'm praying you will make a move today and great things will happen. I was talking with Father Matthew right before mass and he was telling me that he just got back from the March for Life. That happened three days ago in Washington, D.C. Even though it was 20 degrees, there's a pandemic going on, thousands upon thousands of people marched for life. All of us prayed that people would turn their hearts to God and uphold the dignity and the value of life. A couple years ago, a movie came out. You may have seen it. It was called Unplanned. And it was about a woman named Abby Johnson. She was a director of Planned Parenthood in a certain city. And during her tenure, One of the doctors needed help, called upon her. She came in to help him perform an abortion. And while she was in there, she saw the baby in an ultrasound try to avoid being aborted. It so traumatized her that she changed. That was her moment of conversion. And she began to work for pro-life about the dignity and the value of children and of babies. And let me say this, if you're contemplating an abortion, you're looking for a sign, this is your sign. Your child is precious. It's not a choice, it's a gift. Please give your child a chance to live. If so, if you need to, give your child up for a Adoption, God will make a way for you, but please don't destroy the life that is within you. You will live with regret and sorrow. Be pro-life. And for all of us, we pray for life. We pray for the infants in their mother's wombs. We pray for the babies. 68 million children that have been aborted is too much. It's time for conversion. It's time for change. By the grace of God, as a nation, as a world, we need to be converted. And it's a tribute to the mercy of God that God has allowed our planet to continue with this Holocaust going on. I read a story about a statue in South America that we've all seen. It's called Christ the Redeemer. Christ the Redeemer stands in Rio de Janeiro, of course, Brazil. That statue is 125 feet tall and it's perched on a hill and it weighs 1,100 tons, this huge statue of Christ the Redeemer. It overlooks the city of Rio de Janeiro. Well, a master builder and engineer named Hytor Levy was way up on the statue when it was being built some 100 years ago, and he accidentally tripped and almost fell hundreds of feet to his death. But actually what happened, somehow miraculously, he was caught and saved 
And he went through a conversion because of that experience in his life. He was Jewish and he became Catholic because of that experience. Conversion takes place on many levels, spiritually, morally, attitudinally, and also the way we express our faith. And I wanna say that Catholicism has the history. We have descended, if you will, from the apostles. The feast day of St. Paul the Apostle is our feast day. He was the great proclaimer of Christianity and then Catholicism, universalism, to the world. We have the tradition Catholicism does, the wisdom of the saints, a 2,000 year history. And then we have the fullness of faith. Not only word as beautiful as the word of God is and the gospel is, we have sacrament and so much more. Catholicism is the fullness, as we say, the splendor of truth, the fullness of truth. And if you're looking for a home, if you're looking for a church, if you're looking for a place to worship, the Catholic Church opens her arms wide to you. She wants you to go to heaven. She wants you to experience the fullness of conversion and become all that you can be. And this is a place that you can call home. And I invite you to give the Catholic Church a chance. I, as a Catholic priest, and as a Christian, I'm very concerned. I'm concerned about the nuns, not the Catholic nuns, N-U-N-S, the nuns, N-O-N-E-S. Those are those who claim no religion. They're unaffiliated, agnostics, atheists, fallen aways, not going to church. And the survey that has been done says that 20 to 30% of our population fall into this category. If that is you and you're looking for a place, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this mass. Jesus says, come to me. All you who labor and are heavy burdened, I'll give you rest. Jesus said, I haven't come for the healthy. I've come for the sick. I haven't come for the righteous. I've come to call sinners to repentance. And that's why we celebrate this wonderful feast day of the conversion of St. Paul, but also our own conversion. Wherever it is, we need to be converted, whether it be in our relationship with God, our moral life, coming to church, celebrating reconciliation. And let me say that the same grace, the same blessing that was upon Paul the Apostle, Alessandro, Abby Johnson, Hytor Levy, the same grace that is upon millions is now upon you and me that we may be fully converted. Some of you initially converted as you come to Christ. Because as we heard Jesus say in the gospel, the great commission, and I'm so proud of this, our mandate, Jesus said, go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to all people. And then he said, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved.